For countless eons we traveled among the stars. We set route upon on world after world and encountered thousands of sentient races. Some were very much like ourselves, others were terrifyingly alien at first. The sufficiently evolved ones we greeted as equals. The primitives we harmonized and uplifted, but always on our terms. A thousand races paid us tribute. The pulse of life itself resonated with our will. And then we encountered the silent ones. On the third world of a feeble sun, one of our spore ships discovered hemisphere-spanning hives of stone, the likes of which we had never seen. We snatched its inhabitants and examined them with great curiosity. We ran every manner of test we could conceive, all the while scarcely believing the hairless vertebrate's capacity for intelligence. Our confusion was understandable. On countless inhabited worlds, we saw the same evolutionary advance arise, time after time. Through the billion convergences of random chance, a dominant race reaches a threshold of intelligence. With it, come sentience, empathy, and species-wide consensus. The race expands across the planet, unified in thought and action, and reaches an optimal equilibrium with their environment. Gifted with their increased understanding of their own evolutionary biology and that of their surrounding biosphere, they begin to direct evolution to their own ends. In two or three long cycles, their advances culminate in the breeding of migratory bions to take them beyond their terrestrial cradle. There, with nothing but the void around them, their newly accustomed senses hear the first echoes of the pulse that spans the stars. And so, they would cast away the limits of time and distance and take their place among the galactic community. Often, we would find a species before they reach this point. We would speed along their evolutionary development, harmonize their emergent group mind a little closer to our own, and so, very soon, in the greater scheme of things, another friendly race among the stars would be reciprocating just a little more than necessary to show their appreciation for our guidance. Some of the elder races questioned the wisdom of our actions, but the relationships between us and our uplifts were always mutually beneficial. We were very good at what we did. Yet, against all odds, these humans had come to dominate their planet without ever developing true empathy. They possessed a vestigial echo that allowed them to guess the thoughts and emotions of others based on visual and auditory cues. It was also how they communicated. They flailed their appendages and vibrated the air, like unevolved beasts in mating season, and somehow a semblance of meaning is passed between them. Such rudimentary information exchange was not nearly enough to wean them from their predatory instincts. They were disorganized, chaotic, unevolved, and terminated each other with little regard. By the time we found them, they had tamed the entire surface of their planet, without ever arriving at a way to avoid the catastrophic collapse that awaited at the end of their own exponential growth. Indeed, due to the unique evolutionary dead end in which they found themselves, the race as a whole never developed anything beyond the most rudimentary mastery over their biosphere. They still perished to disease and accidents, as often as intentional violence or self-termination. Whole segments of their hives languished in infirmity. To make up for their shortfalls, they instead developed a unique art of assembly. It was a directed method of construction without the use or creation of bias. They built devices for every conceivable purpose, using nothing but the materials of their environment. With nary a fusion bladder in sight, they had flung themselves into near orbit, atop metal tubes of volatile chemicals. Without us, the secret of pulse travel would have been forever denied to them. But to us, they had already achieved the inconceivable. By all analysis, such a race should have driven themselves into extinction long ago. Yet here they were. We could deny their intelligence no longer. Despite their vulgar peculiarities, the ingenuity of their race was unrivaled. Our greed overwhelmed our reason. We began to uplift the humans. Our initial contact was troubled. Unable to determine their hierarchies, we simply rooted our landers in their densest hive clusters and waited for their current leaders to present themselves. When they instead responded with panicked violence, we were forced to defend ourselves and hybridize a generation of emissaries to spreading our message of cooperation. When humanity finally understood our intentions, they turned to violence once more, not towards us, but against each other. 
They fought with absolute conviction that our gifts would only be given to the few. We spent 26 short cycles pacifying and uplifting the humans over times longer than any previous race, but ultimately we succeeded. The humans largely abandoned their own sciences and took to the evolutionary arts with vigor. They never adopted a race-spanning group mind. But localized empathy symbiote swarms allowed them to coexist in harmony as never before. No longer bound by the speed of light, they rode the pulse and quickly spread beyond their local star cluster. In their gratitude, they gifted us with so many optimized habitats that our race was pulled into a new golden age of expansion, exceeding even our greatest expectations. However briefly, humans added their voice to the pulse of life and we were all the richer for it. The golden age would not last. The first hints of trouble rippled through the pulse from the border between the human and Vry space. The rest of the civilized races had long ago decided to give a wide berth to the isolationist Vry. After conceding colonies of our own to them on more than one occasion, there was certainly no fondness between our two races. We predicted their retaliatory strikes against human habitats 55 short cycles in advance, but we downplayed the dangers to our trusting allies. Their expansion progressed apace. Why the Vry chose to unleash their full fury on this occasion, we will never know. Swarms of subverters simultaneously hijacked hundreds of human ships. Seeker tendrils disabled hulls and forcibly bonded with a helpless crew. Psychic nodes spliced unspeakable terrors directly into their prisoners' thoughts, then cast those fear-maddened minds into the pulse to call out to their doomed home worlds. Any unified race would have been paralyzed by the assault, at least temporarily. The humans in their dispersed collectives were initially not as hard hit, but that same division prevented them from forming a united response against the Vry psychic assault. Trillions died or were driven mad. In half a short cycle, entire systems were wiped clean of human life. The surviving humans severed themselves from the pulse. While they still lived and acted in some semblance of unity, whatever was left of their empathy webs were dismantled. Every human reverted to a solitary mind, deafened to tormented screams of their brethren. Once more they became the silent ones. The sentient races were alarmed by the scale of Vry aggression. We assembled a massive relief swarm in just under two short cycles, an endeavor of unprecedented haste. Yet, before the swarm launched, the Vry reached out to us. The humans retaliated against the Vry with a war of extermination. Every asset they possessed, they poured into the conflict. Finding themselves outmatched by Vry Bayans, the humans revived their old sciences. From a thousand fronts, their unliving husks of metal and gas tore through the pulse and rained destruction upon the Vry. When the Vry bioformed their worlds, the humans moved their colonies deeper into space. The humans did not fight for gain. They took only what resources they needed to advance and destroyed the rest simply to deny their enemy. Against unliving ships crewed by unlinked minds, the Vry faced an enemy they could not subvert. The horrors inflicted upon the humans were repaid a hundredfold. The Vry tried to sue for peace, even to admit defeat, but faced with no counterpart in the pulse, they did not even know how to surrender. Their once great dominion was reduced to a mere three systems. The survivors were begging for their lives. They did not have a chance to beg for long. The Vry no longer exist in the galaxy. Neither do the Zaya, the K-Hives, the Miminin, or the hundreds of other races who foolishly decided to turn the Swarm of Salvation into a Swarm of Containment. Whether by prudence or cowardice, we departed from the Swarm. The others did not study the humans as we did. They did not understand how an evolved species could wage a war of genocide. And perhaps, in our greed, we did not want them to. The final war was long and bitter. The humans seized every advantage and overcame every hardship. In their desperation, the remaining races synchronized their minds and all but deafened the pulse. The humans were not deterred. They sent their ships across the void between stars, accelerating to such tremendous velocities that time did not move even as they moved. From a single rotation to a hundred great cycles, the human ships still reached their targets. 
Some arrived as impact marred husks, crewed by same hairless vertebrates we first encountered. Other, later creations appeared more alien to the old humans than the enemies they faced. The Tige of Apex Moon were the last to defy the humans. They woke the slumbering unconscious of their entire biosphere and turned it into a weapon. They bled the essence of the pulse into the empty void, twisting the fabric of space itself until it was anathema to all life. The humans braved their system regardless. They were broken by the millions while they built the great web around that blue-white star. At least, we think the light of the Tihom star was blue-white before it was dimmed forever. It was all so long ago. We are the custodians of the feeble and the dead. Our song alone echoes through the pulse. The humans have long ago ceased to claim terrestrial worlds. We still encounter their ships from time to time, inscrutable geometry surrounded by clouds of automata, no larger than a cell. They let us be, but to any other space-faring race they find, they are not so kind. Too late did we understand their true nature. Humanity is a virus. Like any virus, to a sufficiently advanced species, they were harmless, even exploitable. But through our callous actions, we threw them into an evolutionary cauldron that saw their worlds obliterated, along with the most peaceful members of their species. Only the most aggressive and dangerous combat strain survived, fully adapted to survive and conquer in any environment. Humans have become the perfect virus, against which there can be no defense. We too have ceased our old habits. We no longer meddle in the evolution of primitive species we encounter. But sometime soon, due to no meddling on our part, your race will discover your empathic gift and look up to the stars together. When that time comes, please heed our warning. The stars are not for you. Do not enter the pulse. It is forbidden. Written by Anonymous. Consider tapping the thumbs up and pressing the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video.